He says that for that is delivered, that is what? Delivered, delivered unto he has received. Because you cannot deliver anything without recipient. So when Adam ate the fruit, he delivered the kingdoms, his domain, the place where he is supposed to rule, he delivered it unto the hand of the devil. Amen. Amen. Now that is why the, the Bible calls this world the kingdom of the devil. This world. Because that's what he said to Jesus. He says that, let's go back to verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Mm -hmm. And then he said to him, And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. I will give you two things. There is two things that makes a kingdom. I, I will give you the power and then the glory. The power and the glory will I give unto you. Because the power and the glory of this kingdom was delivered unto me. Amen? Amen. 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 Now let us understand that the, the, when we talk about the kingdom, Paul also told us that this kingdom has another way of looking at it. In chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, he has this to say. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. He says, in whom who? The God of this world. In whom who? In the God of this world. Oh, look at it. Now, am I supposed to show you? Okay, let me show you. Who is this? He says that in whom the God of this world, in whom the God of this world has blinded them, their minds of them which believe not, as the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of G. There are two different, there are two different types of God. One is with G, capital G, and one is a small G. Yes. Capital and small are different. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand that when the king was born, it means that he was born into an, a kingdom, and he is coming to take back the kingdom that Adam, or man, lost. Amen. Amen. Man was given a kingdom to rule. He was supposed to be the governor. He was supposed to have dominion. Now who is man? Man is you. You are man. I am man. So God, in the mind of God, the Bible says that we are supposed to be rulers and to rule in the kingdom that God has given to us. Amen. Are we rulers? Are we rulers? No, we are not. Because there are certain jurisdictions that we have not ever come to understand that we are supposed to be there. Now, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15, it has a deep, a, 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 an interesting way of putting it. It says that, and the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, I want you to say this together with me. He says that, and a, and a great voice in heaven was saying, the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. And who? And he shall reign. He says that the kingdom of this world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and Christ. How did he become? The kingdom of this 
should be something happening in order, or there should be a chain of hand. At one point, Abraham was the original dominion. The, the, domi is, is that the word? Authority. He had the greatest do uh, domain. And then the devil took this domain from him. So now the king has become a subject. The ruler has become ruled. Amen. Amen. Things have changed. Now the man has become a woman. Because at first he was a husband. He was the owner of the house. But now somebody has now come and take over. So he has made him and all, so now you, you realize that the scripture says that and every creation was waiting patiently for the deliverance so that they will be restored to their original glory, original state. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says in the book of Colossians, chapter 2, Oh my God. You, oh Jesus. Jesus. Help me, Lord. Verse 15, I think. Verse 13. There was a word I'm looking for. And you being dead in your sins okay. and the uncircumcision of your flesh, mm -hmm. have he quickened together with him, mm -hmm. having forgiven you all trespasses. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm looking for a word, I think it's in King James, it says that, and he disarmed, he disarmed principalities and powers. Amen? Amen. Now, yeah, go to verse 14. Brought in out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, kneeling it into his cross, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, mm -hmm. he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them okay. in it. Let, let's go to the next verse. But I think you get, huh? yeah. Let no man therefore judge you there in There is another, another version that says that. Okay, that's right, that's right. Thank you. He Thank disarmed you. the rulers and authorities. Now and go to verse 14 so that you can understand why this person says, he, he was disarmed. Mm -hmm. He erased the certificate of debt, of debt, which is obligations that was against us and opposed to us, mm -hmm. and has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. Mm -hmm. He disarmed the rulers. And, and he disarmed the rulers and authorities and disgraced them publicly. Now, what do you, what does that show you? It shows you that before Jesus could take and begin you the kingdom, there was an armed guard. Before the man was taken over, there was no sickness. Amen? Amen. In Adam's world, he didn't know anything like sickness. He didn't know anything like pain. He didn't know anything like disgrace. He didn't know anything like shame. But the day that he took over, the enemy took over, he introduced what is called death. Amen? Amen. Introduction of death. Introduction of sickness. Introduction of shame. Introduction of disgrace. Introduction of all things that is against us. Amen. Amen. And this is what he did. He uses as an armory. He uses as a gun over the head of Adam. So now Adam couldn't say any word. The moment he was constantly being threatened with arms, arm of fear, arm of death, arm of shame. Whenever he wants to stand up, he says, I will shoot you, I will kill you. So forever, man was under the direct house arrest. He couldn't go anywhere. Amen. Amen. But when Jesus came, he found a way, and then he disarmed. He took the arm, he took his armory from him. Amen. And then the Bible says that when he took it, he made it useless. 
So now, therefore, the enemy doesn't have any gun. He doesn't have any ammunition. He doesn't have anything against you. Amen. But now, why is he still ruling us? The devil is still ruling us. Why? Because he has got, you have got in the image of your head the fear of that gun. So whenever you want to stand up, he has to, yes.